Chris Holly here, the retired tanker anchor. Welcome to Transitions, my YouTube channel. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. You subscribe to my channel, you help my channel grow. I will appreciate that very much. Be sure to drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Today, such a lovely fall Saturday, I think I'm going to take a little ride. I'm going to go down to Pennypack Park and just shoot some uh, nice scenery down there. It's an amazing thing that Philadelphia as a city has probably the largest urban park. All the combined park space known as Fairmount Park. And it consists of uh, various sections and the part we're going to is up here in the northeast, Pennypack Park, and it basically goes the entire width of the northeast. Um, it goes all along the banks of the Pennypack Creek from the Delaware River all the way to the Montgomery County line. And it would take days and days and days just to explore a small piece of it, but I'm going to try to do a little bit today right now. This is uh, the path that I walked down from Benton Avenue. Uh, when I used to uh, have a bicycle back before my back got really hurting bad, this is where I used to come into the park and I would coast down this hill. Coming back out of the park, coming up the hill was a little bit tougher though. I mean, it, it was uh, not a steep hill, but you know, when I first started getting back into bicycle riding, and like I said, I had a bicycle before my back got really out of shape. This is where I used to come into the park and I would just coast down this hill until I got down to the bottom here. And well, quite frankly, uh, it would be a, a bit of an adventure as I went down this hill. The path here is not as wide as the path is through the rest of the park. And uh, you had to be really careful because as you would go down this hill, it could get uh, a little scary. Uh, a lot of times, especially uh, in the spring before they'd go down there to clean it up, uh, there'd be debris laying across the road. And quite frankly, you had to be careful. Uh, and more often than not, I wound up walking my bike back up this hill. But as we get down the trail, as you'll see, there are spots on the trail where it becomes a little bit more challenging. Excuse me for that, Belch. I've been suffering with a little gas lately. So as you can see, they're doing some planning along the bank here to try to keep it together. And looking at some of the greenery and planting along here and this is along the banks of the Pennypack Creek. In some spots it really looks kind of still here. This is a very popular spot for fishing, especially in trout season. It is stocked in trout season. So I'm walking down the path here. As you see, as we walk alongside of the creek, the path is just a little bit wider. And we're taking in some of the greenery around here. Uh, we got some really lovely trees down here and a good variety of trees down here. The predominant species seem to be sycamore and ash. But you find poplar, oak, maple, And even a few uh, black walnut trees are seen back here. It just makes for a very lovely scene. And of course, we're looking over into the woods. This is the opposite of the creek. 
see some of these lovely trees here and back down to Bath. And just for safety's sake, there is a little fence here because there is a steep drop off from the path down to the creek. And as you can see here, a lot of nasty rocks down there, so watch your step. And just be careful, safety's sake. When you're biking in the park, always wear your helmet. And of course, this is a very popular spot for families to cycle together. And it's like these people are having a great time on this lovely Saturday. One thing that is pleasant about this area is that along this trail there are many benches where you can stop and rest your weary bones. I mean I like to come down here for the exercise. And walking, I guess, as, as much as I can tolerate actually helps to relieve some of the uh, stress and pain in my back. I just can't do a lot of it. Or at a very brisk pace like I used to be able to. And it's also a good idea to hydrate yourself uh, when you're doing something like this. So. Trash cans along here so that I won't be leaving litter. The park is maintained by the Fairmount Park Commission, uh, which is a division of the Department of uh, Recreation for the city of Philadelphia. And it's also nice to know that living in a big city like this, that you have a place like this that is not a whole lot different than it was a few hundred years ago. Well, I guess there wasn't a, a paved blacktop path for bicycles and joggers and walkers, but it's not hard to imagine the Lenape peoples living in this park, or at least coming down here to fish. And possibly to hunt because there are deer in this park and I'm sure there's been wildlife in this park for a long time. Uh, hasn't been a bear spotted in this park in many, many, many years, but bear have been spotted in other parts of Fairmount Park within the city limits. I think down around the Wissahickon, there was a black bear spotted there a couple years ago. But deer are plentiful. Uh, of course, rabbits, raccoons, possums, coyotes, groundhogs. You can see them here. I always thought this retaining wall was built maybe uh, in later years, maybe possibly as late as the 50s or 60s. But I could be wrong. I really don't know. But it does look nice, doesn't it? When you're cycling down here, you do have to be careful because there's supposed to be a speed limit, but people ignore it. So, again, be sure to wear your helmet when you're cycling. Any town, really. It amazes me that on the 19th of October, this is all the leaf change we've had so far. And the trees that seem to be changing are the sycamores, which normally start changing in September. But, you know, I really don't know why trees turn so much later anymore. Maybe it's uh, climate change. Another peaceful view of the uh, Pennypack Creek and families. What would, what would a day in the park be without kids playing in the water, huh? So here we look at uh, some of the various species of trees here. Like I said, the predominant species are sycamore and ash. We do have maples and uh, oaks and poplars and even black walnut. And as you see a pretty healthy ash tree here, uh, I'm surprised that the trees in the park are relatively free from infestation by the emerald ash borer, which has been a problem here in Pennsylvania for some time. Ash trees uh, are another tree that loses their leaves early in the fall. 
but as you see here, these trees are very healthy. There's a sycamore, and some more of the lovely trees. I really can't get over the fact that these trees are still nice and green. Even some of the sycamores haven't even really changed a lot yet. Now this particular ash tree here, I don't know if they're suspecting this might be starting to be infested, but it has a yellow dot painted on it, a marker of some kind. I don't know what it means. Another one of those nice big lovely sycamores here. I think that's the most prevalent tree in the park. So let's just keep walking down the path here. This is uh, a transition in the path where there's a hill you climb and kind of a challenge when you've been cycling on fairly level ground and you hit this hill. It's right at a curve in the, in the creek and a curve in the path. Uh, we're getting up uh, around the Cruistown Road entrance here now. A lot of rocks. It really is a pleasant surprise as I come down into this park to see how healthy the ash trees are that they are seemingly unaffected by the emerald ash borer which has pretty much decimated the ash trees here in Pennsylvania. I don't know, maybe emerald ash borers don't like the city. At any rate, I stopped, take another little break and begin to hydrate. Of course, later today I intend to hydrate myself with uh, a different type of fluid, one that comes from Pottsville, Pennsylvania. You know, maybe that's an idea for an upcoming video. I'll take a ride up to the England Brewery because they do have a nice tour and I think uh, they've expanded their uh, operation to have an off-site gift shop where you can go and get your free samples. You don't get to go into the, that little Rathskeller for your samples at the end of the brewery tour anymore, but anyway, it is a lovely day today, nice and sunny, not a lot of clouds, it was about 39 degrees when I got up at Fahrenheit, uh, that'd be about uh, 4 degrees Celsius for you people who don't live in the United States. Uh, temperature right now is probably uh, in the high 50s. So it turned out to be a lovely day and the thing is uh, it really gets me that being this late in October that we're only beginning to get a leaf change here. I don't know is that climate change? Is that the wet spring and early summer that we had? All the rain we've had? Uh, I know we had a lot of hot weather and you know early rain followed by late hot weather usually makes for a magnificent leaf change in the fall uh, and you know when I was a kid growing up you'd see the leaf change pretty much all the way by the 19th of October but it looks like the trees are just starting to change here uh, sycamores always change early but we're not seeing a dramatic change so far. And, I don't know, is that good? I mean, I prefer summer to winter. I don't like the freezing cold weather, and I certainly don't like the snow. But, if it was year-round like this, I could take it. But, I live in Philadelphia, not San Diego. So let's pan around here because I hear some rustling in the leaves. I think we have one of those little bushy-tailed furry little critters that my brother-in-law, Dennis, loves so much. There's got to be some around here somewhere. I'm going to have to include a few of those little... Yep, there he is. I can hear him. Where are you, you little bastard? 
Well, where are you? I know you're around there somewhere. Show your face. Be the star of the video. Somewhere in there. Do we got him here? Do we got him here? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Check it out, Dennis. One of your favorite creatures in the whole wide world. Hiding in there. Must be a male squirrel, because I can hear his nuts crack. Go get him, little guy. Here he goes. Well, I think I'm going to start heading back to the car now. Hopefully I'll be able to make it without having to stop and sit down again. But, you know, that's the way it is when, you know, I hate to keep pounding on this one, but, you know, I do have chronic pain from degenerative disc disease and spinal stenosis, so walks like this are sometimes a little tough. So anyway, I'm going to start heading back to the car, see what I can do between here and there. It's nice to get a little bit of uh, the creek running over some rocks and gets a little more babbling here. That is such a pleasant sound. And it's a lovely spot here. Now isn't it beautiful? Those are some sycamores and just starting to show the leaf change. And we have some poplar trees here too. We got a stand of a whole bunch of poplars here. Okay, so that's what I did today. And I'm going to uh, now try to piece this thing together. Doing something a little different with the voiceover. Uh, so this might take a while to edit because it's the first time I'm doing a voiceover video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, like and share this video. And for transitions, this is Sully, the retired tanker anchor. Staying safe and happy travels.